The Vietnam War showed America the need for a new and improved attack aircraft to replace the A-1 Sky Raider. Over the next decade, the U.S. Air Force began developing such large-scale projects as the F-4 and F-111. However, insufficient speed performance as well as high maintenance costs contributed to the emergence of another machine, the Thunderbolt II. And today, we'll take a look at all the advantages, disadvantages, and capabilities of this model together. Here's the news. And here we go! The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is an attack aircraft designed specifically to provide direct air support to ground troops and defeat ground targets. It was named after the World War II fighter-bomber P-47, but the airplane is much better known as the Warthog. This nickname the aircraft got because of its not very attractive appearance, in particular for the nose, resembling the muzzle of an African parsnip. The initiative to create the Thunderbolt II came from the U.S. Air Force, which in 1966 launched the AX Attack Experimental. It was planned to develop a vehicle capable of speeds of at least 650 kilometers an hour with high maneuverability at low altitudes, the possibility of basing on unpaved airfields, and powerful cannon armament. In 1972, two major American companies, Northrop and the Fairchild Republic, presented their prototype. The first showed the YA-9A for $29 million. The second showed the YA-10A, on which they spent $41.2 million. Both aircraft were then subjected to comparative testing under the supervision of experienced pilots from the JTF, Joint Test Force Division. On the whole, the contestants proved to be worthy competitors. The Northrop sample had slightly better maneuverability and acceleration, while the Fairchild Republican prototype was more economical and easier to maintain. In January 1973, the government opted for the latter. The Fairchild Republic was ordered to produce 10 pre-production models at $159 million. Over the next 10 years, 715 were produced, two prototypes, six pre-production YA-10As, and 707 production A-10s. By 1984, mass production of the model ceased completely. The Thunderbolt design was a low plane with a trapezoidal wing and twin-wing vertical wingtips. The plane turned out to be of medium size, the length is 16.5 meters and the wingspan 17.5 meters. The fuselage has a semi-monocoque shape made of aluminum alloy with increased resistance to crack propagation. The low-lying three-spar wing consists of three sections, in the center of which fuel tanks are placed. The cockpit is single-seat and covered with thick titanium armor, often referred to as batten. It's capable of withstanding a 37mm shell hit. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that the Bearden has received many upgrades since its commissioning, one of which was the Pave Penny laser system installed on board in 1978. Equally important upgrades were the inertial navigation system and the low-altitude safety and targeting enhancement, which provided computerized weapons aiming gear, autopilot, and ground collision warning system. The latter was later upgraded with the integrated flight and fire control computer. At the end of the century, the A-10 was equipped with global positioning system navigation systems and a multi-function display. As a disadvantage of the bearded man, we can point out its tendency to friendly fire. Thus, during the battle for Ras al Hafji, it destroyed a domestic armored vehicle, LAV-25. A month later, it attacked British infantry fighting vehicles. This was due to the specifics of the attack aircraft's combat operations, most often operating close to its troops. The power plant consisted of two General Electric TF-34 GE-100 turbofan engines, Thanks to them, the aircraft could accelerate up to 850 kilometers per hour, climb to a height of 13,000 meters, and cover a distance of 750 kilometers with a full combat load. The A-10 is quite well armed. The total weight of all ammunition is about 7 tons. The pride of the Thunderbolt II is a 30mm 7-barrel Gatling gun installed in the center of the fuselage. It's capable of engaging a target at 3,500 meters and has ammunition of 1,174 rounds. I'd like to draw your attention to the fact that since its development to this day, this weapon is one of the most powerful artillery systems ever installed on American airships. It's complemented by an assortment of different bombs and missiles to defeat both ground and air targets. 
This list includes the American Classic AIM-9 AGM-65 Maverick Guided Air-to-Ground Missiles with Electro-Optical Guidance, Unguided Hydra-70 and Zuni Missiles, also Mark-77 Incendiary Bombs, CBU Cluster Bombs, Laser-Guided Paveway Rounds, All-Weather High-Precision JDAM, WCMD Bombs, and AGM-154 Joint Standoff Weapon Glide Bomb. The aircraft initially faced harsh criticism regarding its appearance and limited reconciliation. However, fairly quickly, the A-10 proved a necessity for the U.S. Air Force. Since the 1990s, it's been actively used in combat operations, the first of which took place during the Gulf War. Here, the uncouth subsonic attack aircraft fought no worse than Nighthawks, F-117, or the Old Eagles, F-15. A total of 144 aircraft flew more than 8,000 sorties, and were able to take out about 1,000 Iraqi tanks, 2,000 other pieces of military equipment, and 1,200 barrels of artillery. Here, it's worth adding that the combat losses were only 7 machines shot down and about 15 seriously damaged. One of the most combative and successful A-10As was the plane nicknamed Alligator, which destroyed 18 tanks, 9 armored cars, and 20 trucks. In addition to its combat capabilities, the Bearden can also boast of increased survivability in combat. This was first talked about after Operation Desert Storm, when one of the A-10s suffered severe wing damage and was able to return to base. Our hero's combat experience did not end there. It later participated in the NATO military operation against the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia in 1999. In the early 2000s, it was used to destroy the Taliban in Afghanistan. At the time, the attack aircraft aroused the eerie interest of many European as well as Asian countries, among which we can mention Australia, Britain, Belgium, Germany, South Korea, Japan, and even Turkey. But despite the frenzied interest, none of the above countries have ever purchased this model. The reason was that the limited budget of these countries did not allow to buy a highly specialized heavy A-10 instead of which usually chose a more versatile aircraft. Over its half-century history, the attack aircraft received many upgrades and refinements. So for the night all-weather work, the two-seat night-slash-adverse-weather YA-10B was created, but it never went into mass production. Another interesting version is the A-10PCAS, an unmanned version developed by Raytheon and Aurora Flight Sciences. In the 2000s, the bearded man slowly began to decline and in order not to write it off prematurely, a modification program was launched. As part of this program, all aircraft were equipped with new glass cockpit displays and controls, two new 5.5-inch 140mm color displays with a moving map function and an integrated digital system, and also a fire control system, electronic countermeasures, and intelligent bomb targeting. All of the improved models became known as the A-10C. However, even with all these additions, the A-10 is not capable of withstanding modern anti-aircraft systems such as Tor M2-M3, Buck M2, or Tunguska. Therefore, the series had to be reduced to 250 units, and in the future, it had to be replaced by the new F-35 stealth fighters. It's worth noting that the replacement turned out to be too unequal. Warthog has much more ammunition than the Lightning II, which, without sacrificing its low visibility, can carry only one cannon and two to four bombs or missiles. I can't help but notice the difference in cost per hour of flight for both. The F-35A has a price of $45,000. In the case of our hero, it's much lower, only $17,564. By the way, regarding the price, I'll stress that the A-10 costs only $16.25 million. This is relatively cheap if compared with other combat vehicles, and despite the emergence of stronger contenders in the air arena, Thunderbolt is too early to retire. According to preliminary forecasts, this will happen no earlier than 2040. In the meantime, the survivable and fierce A-10 will be able to fight the enemies who do not have modern air defense systems, for example, terrorists in the Middle East and Africa. Be sure to write about how impressed you were with the Beard Wolf in the comments. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll bring you more videos soon. See ya.